Welcome back. This will be the final video on basic slide rule use. Um, we'll talk about chain operations, uh, what I'm going to call the direct reading scales, um, and uh, this is going to include finally the trigonometry scales. Um, let's get started. Okay, say I want to do a chain operation here. Uh, the way that we've uh, set things up, uh, this should be pretty easy. Uh, what I'll do is I'll first find the 3.9 on the D, then to multiply again I'll use my foolproof technique using the CI scale uh, and find 5.1, then I want to find the index. Now this intermediate result on the D scale I'm just uh, going to ignore. I'm not going to try to estimate it. It looks like about to. Um, but what I'm going to do is, uh, the, the cursor is now set at the intermediate uh, step, and what I will do is uh, do a second multiplication. So I'll just uh, find on the CI scale the second number I want to multiply by, the 2.8, about there, and then move the cursor to the end. Okay, um, And what I get here, um, you can see, is about 5, 6. And then as usual I need to estimate the magnitude, of course here it's maybe a little harder, but the uh, correct magnitude uh, should give me two more zeros here, 5600. Okay. Um, now, I could do this uh, involving one or more divisions. Uh, so let's see, let's find 3, 4, 10. So here's 3.4, and I'll add a hair. And then times 5, 7 using the CI scale. About there. Remember the CI scale reads reversed. Um, so now I need to find the index. One of them should be on scale. There's the intermediate result. Then I'm going to divide by 2300 or 2.3. Now to divide, remember I use the C scale. Uh, so using the C scale here, there's 2.5, 2.4, 2.3. Um, then, again, using this technique, one of the indices should be on scale. Um, and here, I get result about, I'm going to estimate that at 8.5. And then thinking about where I should put the decimal point, uh, this number over this number, a little over 1 times that. Looks correct as it is. Okay, so that's how you can chain operations, multiple... Um, multiplications or divisions. Um, of course you lose accuracy as you go uh, every time you have to set the slide. Um, so on more complicated slide rules, um, maybe I'll do a future video, you can do all calculations like this uh, to a combination of two multiplications uh, or divisions or a combination of those uh, using only one setting of the slide. You can think, uh, maybe you can do this one using a proportion uh, with only one setting, but uh, Fancier slide rules have additional scales which help you do that uh, for accuracy. Okay, finally, let's, let's get into some trigonometry. Um, now, the sine scale on this basic slide rule is on the back. On some slide rules, it's on the front. Um, it's going to be a little awkward. Now, um, it has a window for direct reading. If you line things on the back, then you can read results uh, under the index here on the front without flipping the slide. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to use it as on the front um, instead of using the reverse. But uh, some slide rules have that window for uh, direct reading when they're on the back. Uh, in other words, you set it under the hairline here and you read the result um, under the index of the D scale here. Um, on some slide rolls, it's on the left side. Um, now, getting into these more complicated scales, you should really read the manual for your slide rule. Some sine scales are, are keyed to different things besides the D scale. Uh, sometimes it's the A scale. Uh, sometimes it's an inverse scale. So you need to be careful uh, when you're getting into the trig uh, functions. You should really read the manual. Um, okay, but this is a common, common probably the most common layout. The sine scale uh, should be read against the D scale, or if it's possible on your slide rule, against the C scale. Um, and you can see that the sine scale, the S here, uh, it reads from about 5.7 up to 90.
those are degrees. Uh, so, so a slide rule is permanently set to degrees, degree mode. Um, and between 5.7 and 90, signs are approximately uh, between 0.1 and 1. We know sine of 90 degrees should be 1. Okay, uh, so let's do some exercises here. If I set the uh, cursor to 30 degrees here, then I read the correct answer 5, or 0.5, because I use this range, um, we know that's correct. Okay, if I set it to 40 degrees, I need to make sure I keep the slide aligned, um, unless your slide rule has an, an S, which is fixed uh, with the D, or they're both on the slide, uh, the S and the C, say. Okay, so keeping, being careful to keep it aligned, I set 40 degrees here, and I read the sign about 6 point, uh, 6.4 here, so 0.64. Okay, so that I could I could find 10.4 degrees. Uh, so here's 10. Uh, point. Uh, this is actually 11. So 10.4 is here, and I'll read the sign off down here about 1.5678. Uh, now you need to watch out. A lot of slide rules, um, especially older ones, or some really cheap slide rules. Um, have the lower divisions of the sine and the tangent scales um, in minutes. Um, so they're not broken into decimal degrees like this one is. So you see here, um, I have 10 and then uh, 0.4 would be the second division uh, because there are five divisions between 10 and 11. Um, this, is, this corresponds nicely to the other scales on this slide rule, but you will find slide rules which are divided there in a different way uh, because they're expecting the user to use degrees, minutes, seconds. Uh, so watch out for that. Okay, now you could do this all in reverse uh, in order to compute arc sine. Uh, so for example, if you started on the D scale and you set it to 4.4 here, uh, then you went up to the sine scale, uh, you see that it's reading uh, 26 degrees. So this is computing an arc sine. Then you might be wondering, how do I compute cosine? Uh, so the trick for that is that cosine of 35 degrees is sine of the complement, uh, complement being 90 degrees minus 35 degrees or 55 degrees. That's, in fact, why it's called cosine, if you didn't know that. Um, so to compute cosine of 35 degrees, I compute sine of 55 degrees. 55 degrees here. And I get about 0.82. Okay, so I can compute sine, cosine, arc sine. Um, you can compute arc cosine if you're clever. Uh, you can see here's a fancier slide roll. Uh, here is the S scale on the fancy slide roll. In red, it's marked with the cosines, which you can see are the complements. Uh, so 20 and 70. 10 and 80, so that's for computing cosines. Um, okay, so let's do a little trigonometry here. Um, this is going to be a cumbersome uh, computation on this slide roll. Well, let's say we want to uh, find the lengths of these two sides of this right triangle. This could also correspond to a vector calculation uh, resolving the x and the y components. I could find the sine of 41 degrees. Here's 41. So the sign should be reading on the D scale. Now I want to do a multiplication. So that side length is 21 times sine of 41 degrees. I'm leaving the, the cursor uh, set to the sine of 41 degrees. And then once I can get this in here, I'm going to multiply uh, the number on the D scale using the CI scale, uh, 2.1, should come to the end. And I read the results uh, 1, 3, 8 there. Um, and correct magnitude should be 13.8. Okay, uh, now on the other side, I, I should compute 21 times cosine of 41 degrees. Okay, so I need to go back. You can see how on a fancier slide rule with more scales on a side, you wouldn't have to do those. So, uh, to compute cosine of 41 degrees, what I'll do is compute sine of 49 degrees, the complement. Um, so here, finding it out here, 49 degrees, 
reading the sign on the D scale, getting my other scales back here. I'm going to multiply by 21 again. Okay, coming out to here. Uh, then I read result about 15.8. Okay. Let's see another way to compute this side length uh, using the law of sines. This is very interesting. So according to the law of sines, I could have something like sine of 90 degrees uh, over 21 should be like sine of 41 degrees uh, over this. Let's just call it y. Okay. Um, now, of course, uh, 90 degrees is an interesting one here because we, uh, we know what the sine is. Um, but uh, this is not really necessary to be 90 degrees, and you can use this technique to solve oblique triangles. Um, so, uh, let's take the 90 degrees here. I'm going to put it over 21. So here's 21. I'm going to put the 90 over it there. Okay. There we have it. So I've set this ratio according to the law of sine, sine of 90 degrees over 21. Now, in order to find y, I just uh, set sine 41. So there's 41. And aha, down here it's reading that 13.8 that we found before for the y. Uh, so that just takes one setting of the slide. You can see how you might go off scale. Think about how uh, you could solve that problem. Um, this is giving you a hint into some of the, the clever uses of the scales of the slide roll. Uh, one is using the proportion principle plus the law of signs with the S and the D scale. Um, okay, just want to give you a taste. Of course, when you're done with these videos, you should go and get a good slide roll manual, especially if it's one uh, for your slide roll. Um, okay, the T scale is for tangents. I'm not going to explain the S and T. Uh, but that's for sines and tangents of small angles. Um, you can read about that in your manual if your slide rule has an S and T scale. Um, some of the basic slide rules do not have that. Um, okay, and you can see T also starts at about angle 5.7 degrees, but it only goes up to 45 degrees. Uh, but it works uh, generally in the same way as the S scale. So if I want tangent of 35 degrees, I find 35 on T. And then I read the tangent here, 0.7. If I want tangent of 20 degrees, I find 20 degrees. Read the tangent here, 0.365. Um, here's a good question. What if I want a tangent of an angle between 45 degrees and 90 degrees? Okay, well, I could use cotangent. Again, cotangent is the tangent of the complement, so that would be cotangent of 20 degrees. Um, problem is, I still can't find that on the scales, <laughs> okay? Uh, so what do I do? Well, cotangent is 1 over tangent. Okay, so um, let's see here. I have the slide rule already set for tangent of 20 degrees, um, so I need the reciprocal. Well, there is a scale for that. The CI scale. So I'm going to read the result here on the CI scale. Remember, it's reading in reverse. Um, 2.5675. Uh, okay, so the, using that technique I can compute a cotangent. Uh, if you have that CI scale on the same side as your tangent scale, uh, then you can compute those without the slide interchange like that. Um, okay, the last scale I want to explain is the log scale, the L scale. You can see the L scale is actually a linear scale. Um, now, uh, the way you use this scale is um, to compute log of, say, 4.5. Um, I actually find 4.5 on the D scale. Um, then I read uh, the result 0.653 about on the L scale. Now, this is kind of reverse of how we uh, did direct reading of S or T. Uh, so here is an, let's go back to this complicated slide roll. Um, this is called a self-documenting slide rule, so it has all the names we've been using over here on the basic slide rules, uh, but it has uh, function names over here, and you can see the C and the D are marked with X, and then what all the other scales are with respect to X is marked 
on the right hand side here. So you see the A and the B scales are X squared, right? Uh, I think there is a K scale on the other side. The K scale is X to power 3. Um, and you can see, with respect to the X scales, the S scale uh, computed arc sine, and that's what that little symbol there is for, <laughs> it's for arc sine, right? Um, and in the same way, the T scales compute arc tangent. Uh, the one that we had is, was T1, but you can see this one has T2 for the angles between 45 and 90, the advantages of a fancier slide roll. Um, okay, um, but the L scale, right, is simply log of X, right? So it doesn't do inverse when you go from uh, C or D to L uh, like the the sine and the tangent scale do, it actually just computes log. Um, now, uh, interesting thing is it's actually a linear scale, right? The divisions are constant. Think about why that's appropriate. Um, but let's do a more complicated uh, computation. What if I want to compute log of something uh, which is not on the C scale? Well, log of 450. Um, Let's see what that should be. Well, it should be log of 4.5 times 10 squared. And then, using the log rules, that's log of 4.5 plus log of 10 squared. So using scientific notation, gets me the exponent. Uh, this is 2. The exponent becomes actually the integer part of the log. Um, and then, the mantissa um, is read off of the slide rule, that 0.635 we already computed. Um, so using scientific notation uh, plus the L scale, you can compute the log base 10 of any number that you want uh, by computing it as uh, exponent and mantissa. Um, so interesting property, right, of numbers here is that if your number has uh, three digits, subtract one, that's uh, this number here, right? If the number is four digits, subtract one, that's that number there. Right. In other words, the logarithm is approximately the number of digits um, in your in your number. At least the logarithm with base ten. Right. Um, okay. Now, if you use this process in reverse, you compute uh, exponential function with base ten. Right. So if I use this in reverse, that means finding 0.71 on the L scale first, and then reading results on the D scale 5.1. So doing this in reverse computes exponents with base 10. And you can turn something like this back into the number. Well, I hope you enjoyed this series of videos on basic slide rule use. Um, in the future, I may put up some videos on uh, intermediate or advanced slide rule use. Um, but you should get a slide rule, a basic one like this. Uh, get a manual and uh, have some fun.